you don't see in corporate positions or in higher management positions, you're talking about entry level positions and you're still not seeing the diversity that you would expect if affirmative action is actually working for black people. And then he talked about how black people were accused of every time they got into a good school or, or, any, or any school over white people that it was affirmative action. And then he said, he and and I gotta look that up just to verify. But he said that um, affirmative action benefits white women more than it benefits black people as a whole. Hi. Angel with Unbasic Black here, and today we are having another Unbasic conversation. Today we are basing our discussion today off of a TED talk that May had watched um, called, uh, um, I, I think it was called Mediocrity, Mediocracy in the Black Community. If that's not the title, I'll put it somewhere along here. <laughs> Um, so, and it was a TED talk by Andre Williams from January of this year. And basically what he was saying was how hard it is to always have to be perfect because of the stereotypes that people of color in particular, black people, African American people are not, um, are lazy and that, you know, we go, we like being mediocre, right? Hey, May with Unbasic Black, talking today about why I potentially support black mediocrity. Yep, 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 calm down, calm down, black people, calm down, okay? It's okay. Let me get through it, and then we, you'll see what I'm, what I'm talking about. So I recently saw this video a TED Talk video from a guy named Andre Williams. And the title of his talk was, I Support Black Mediocrity. So, more than likely, like you, I'm sitting there like, what? Uh-uh. No, 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 no. And then plus, you know, we're on basic black, where black is never basic. So, how can you talk about being mediocre? Um, well, the thing that he, the point he was making was, Essentially, and this is like totally nutshell, I just want to be like everybody else. I don't want to have to be better than just to achieve half of what our white counterparts um, achieve. And I know, I know white people, I understand that you weren't handed anything, you weren't given anything and all those kinds of things, but please just listen to what we're saying and try not to take offense because if you fall into that category, we're not talking to you. So don't worry about it. It's okay. Oh, all right. So I was thinking about like marathons, right? You've got um, marathon runners who go out and they complete like a standard marathon, let's say a 5k right? A 10K. Let's say a 10K because I know people be like, well, 5K, you mean it. So let's say a 10K. Now, a 10K would represent white America, okay? A 10K would represent white America. Now, black people come in and they say, hey, we want to run the 10K as well, right? And this analogy applies to this mediocrity that we're talking about and how black people have to work twice as hard okay so you go to the marathon you show up you know you're ready to go you've got your water bottle you've got your you know cute little shorts on and you're ready to run this marathon you know you've you've trained for it you know you went to you marathon school <laughs> okay let's say you went to marathon school and you're ready for this thing right then you get to the race and they say, okay, everybody line up, except for you guys. You guys being any of the black people who showed up. So it's you and probably two other people, because it's not a lot, right? So you show up and you're like, okay, why do we have to stand over here? They're like, oh, okay, you guys are gonna run the marathon, but you also have to complete some elements of a triathlon. But I'm not running a triathlon, I'm here for the 10K. 
yes, you are running the 10K, but you also have to do the swimming portion. Okay. So you're running your marathon, trucking along, and then you see, okay, um, black person, you've got to complete this biking section. So you're biking it. You're biking it, right? Okay, done with the biking. I can jog now. I can complete the marathon. So you're running along, right? Oh, another obstacle. Now that you've completed the swimming portion, you've got to do the biking, and then you've got to do the swimming, and then you've got to do, you know, you see what I'm saying? So when you finish all of that, you're like, okay, I've done everything that I, I could do. I'm done with all of that, okay? Now, back on course. Okay, I'm running. I'm running the marathon. I'm running a marathon. But because all of the white people have just ran straight, they've been running the marathon. It was hard. And they've had to really exert themselves and apply a lot of energy, but they didn't have the same obstacles to overcome. So they're already done with the race. And then here you come trucking along and you're like, you know, I've been running as hard as I could. And here I am at the finish line, right? <laughs> so you see my point. All right. So um, one of the things that is handed down to us as black people generation after generation and i did it to my own son was telling him you are a black you're going to be a black man in america you have to work twice as hard maybe three times as hard you got to present yourself as your best self every time so that you're not judged by the color of your skin because automatically people are going to look at you and say oh he must be in the gang and he's not far from it so um, but every time he brought home his report card, I gave him that speech, that speech. You're going to be a black man in America. You need to do better with your grades. You need to do this. You need to go to college. You need to excel. You need to be at the top of your class or as best as you can to the, you got to do better because this is not going to cut it. They're going to automatically label you anyway. And then you, on top of that, you got bad grades. You're just going to fall into the stereotype. So... I, I, I did that spiel with him just about every report card and and now that I'm looking back on it, I could have applied a, a lot less pressure because it's not fair. Not that life is fair. We get that part. We know life is not fair. But it's not fair for us to place that on our children. It was placed on me too. I was reading by the time... I was four and not, I mean, I mean, I wasn't reading Shakespeare, but when I got to kindergarten, I could read. So see Jane run, that was easy for me because my parents wanted me to be the best and, and all that kind of thing. So, um, it, it's a lot of pressure and Andre brought up in his video, like it's hard enough to be black and now we got to be black and perfect. And that perfection has really weighed on me personally because everything I do when I fail and I call it failure, uh, you're allowed to make mistakes. No, I'm not allowed to make mistakes. I can't make mistakes because every time I make a mistake, there's backlash for it. Some form of backlash, even if it's in my own head. So, um, um, I like that he, he, and he talked about, um, the differences between, he covered um, arrests, and school entries, college entries, and something I had not heard of before, um, legend? I'm sorry, I gotta look that up. Legend, something to do with legacy. That's it, legacy. And that's where it, it predominantly benefits white people where they they get into college based on well the color of their skin more so than anything else um and then he talked about how black people were accused of every time they got into a good school or or any or any school over white people that it was affirmative action and then he said he and and i gotta look that up just to verify but he said that um affirmative action benefits white women more than it benefits black people as a whole. Whoa. Having to work twice as hard as someone else just so you can achieve 
a little bit of what they have and they being white people in particular uh white america in our case but i think this applies around the world people of color have to work very very hard not only do we have to work hard but we also have to achieve a level of perfection that we're never given credit for <laughs> she may have mentioned how she put a lot of pressure on her son that he had to make good grades that he had to you know you know you have to do well because you know no one's gonna give it to you and i think that's a speech that most black people have with their kids you know you have to work hard because no one's gonna help you no one's gonna give you anything and that kind of <clears throat> excuse me that kind of made me think about um affirmative action that may had mentioned because with affirmative action the perception is that you know black people get a lot of handouts in the workplace and in college admissions and all these other things but i put to you this <laughs> if black people are getting so much out of affirmative action how come you don't see more people employed in the workplace you don't see in corporate positions or in higher management positions you're talking about entry level positions and you're still not seeing the diversity that you would expect if affirmative action is actually working for black people another thing is the as you start to climb the ladder you know the pyramid as it starts to go up and you get to these different tiers the higher you get the less diverse it is diverse it is anyway but in particular amongst people of color, you don't see a lot of black people in higher level corporate positions, whatever organization you work for, just look around, you know, they have the, the wall of the leadership, you know, they have pi pictures of people and you don't see a lot of people of color. <laughs> so if affirmative action is really working as intended for black people, where are we? Right? because we're working and we're working hard, but you don't see the diversity in these. <laughs> Sorry, there's like a bug or something. You don't see the diversity that you would expect if affirmative, affirmative action is working as it is intended to work. Now, one of the things that struck me um, was who benefits the most from affirmative action because it's not black people. So, a lot of people forget that affirmative action includes minority groups. White people have a minority group and that is white women. So when you look at affirmative action, white women have benefited the most from affirmative action. It has not been black people. The dang sure hasn't been black women. We've had to claw, fight, scrap, <laughs> and every inch of the way. So when you see women who are quote unquote angry, you know, sometimes they have a reason to be angry because they just worked 17 hours, right? But anyway. The the police brutality and how, and this was interesting, he showed a picture and, and watch the video. It's It's really informative. He showed a picture of this lady being helped down the steps by police officers and this woman was just part of the insurrection a few months several months ago and they're helping her down the steps and we know that it would have gone a totally different way first of all black people wouldn't have gotten that as far as as um as those um as those trump supporters did or we wouldn't have made it <laughs> barricade man please at any rate so and then showing the difference and then the guy who ran over a bunch of people um during a protest was given something to eat and not thrown to the ground and held by held down with a knee on his neck that didn't happen and he just killed people so that whole thing about us having to work twice as hard to even be perceived as human, it, it's exhausting. And why can't we just, why can't we just be people? Why can't we just, why can't we just go to school and if we don't get it, we just don't get it? Why do our parents 
have to to fuss and in the old days whoop us over our grades. It's systemic. Cause I'm I'm thinking about all the things that that leads up to certain behaviors in our culture. Um um I was listening to and this this ties in. I was listening to Les Brown. Um one day he was on Impact Theory and he told the story about his mother and he and his mother were out somewhere and he's from Florida. He and his mother were out somewhere and he saw a water fountain. He was a little boy. He just took off, ran to the water fountain and got something to drink. His mom beat him, whooped him so bad. Um, and then a police officer came by and he just nodded because he, he was holding the stick and he just nodded and like told her something like good job or something like that. And when he walked away, he said his mom held him so tightly and she, she sobbed and apologized. She said, I had to do it because if I didn't do it, he was going to beat you. And then I would go to jail for trying to keep this man from beating you because nobody's going to put their hand on my baby kind of thing. So and you see, you'll get all misty eyed. So all of that ties in with we do things to make ourselves and our children be the ultimate best that they can be only for it not to be good enough anyway when our counterparts don't even have to do anything they don't have to really i was thinking about as i was getting preparing for this last night i was thinking about how for interviews for example i had dreads for a while love them and i was going on an interview for a job and i thought about how my hair was going to be perceived Am I going to look like a militant black woman because I have dreads? Will they think that I won't fit into this job because of my hair? Not let alone my skin. I'm thinking about my hair. Um, and um, and, and we, we, you dress to the nines, like dress, like everything except a church hat for these interviews. And you look at the other people who are in the lobby for the interview and sorry and it feels like they are in flip-flops and a t-shirt <laughs> because of how they're dressed you're like why am i going through all of this just so that you can see me as as a viable candidate when this person isn't even doing half as much as I did to get ready. It just threw on a shirt and some pants and some slides. And and this is how they're gonna go into the interview. And th this is how serious it gets for me. I'm thinking about the way my bra looks. Like, am I lifted up high enough? Am I, am, am I clean cut? Is the makeup just right? Is, is, is my posture just right? Is my, my diction, my poise? It's, it's, it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Um, and, and even walking around and stuff, it's like, it's like we're, it's like we have to be in ambassadors for the entire black race, the black race around the world. We have to present this image that we have to present this image just so that we could at least be treated like human beings so that we don't get followed around in a store. But we still do it. It trips me out. I hear the stories about celebrities being followed in a store because the a, a clerk or a manager or whatever thinks they're gonna steal something. It's like <laughs> I could buy the store. I'm just trying to look. I'm looking for underwear. <laughs> At any rate. Yes, everybody is working hard. Yes, white people have to work very hard to get everything that they have, but they do not have the same obstacles to overcome that we do as people of color, as black people in particular, and especially as black women. We have so many hurdles that we have to overcome just to get to the same place, just to run the same race that you're running. So in actuality, we're not running the same race at all, okay? So, 
May had mentioned being ambassadors, having to be ambassadors of blackness is what I call it, ambassadors of blackness. And I travel extensively and I go all over the world, right? As a hobby, just because I love to travel and also for work. And one of the things that has been very difficult for me is having to constantly be this ambassador because not only am I a representative of my country, so people look and say, oh, look at those Americans. So I have to make sure I'm on my game because I love my country. I love America. And I never wanna do anything that casts America in a negative light because we already, we're already getting a bad rap these days. I don't I wanna do anything that casts America in a bad light. So I'm always mindful of that, making sure that I'm polite, making sure that I'm, you know, not overly loud or whatever the case may be. But then you add another layer to it, being a black person. And as a black woman, I am already stereotyped the moment they see me because a lot of times in the countries that I travel to, they don't have a lot of interaction with black people. So most of the interactions or most of the information that they have about black people come from either movies or media or whatever the case may be. So a lot of times the perception is either I'm a really good dancer, a really good singer, um, I might be an English teacher maybe, right? But I can't be a professional. I'm not here because I'm a lawyer or, you know, whatever the case may be. It's because I'm probably some sort of singer or some something, right? And on the other side of that, people are already cautious of you because all they know is that in the States, um, or on media or in the movies or in whatever the case may be, and this is across the world, that black people are criminals, they're lazy, they're angry, etc. So I am always having to be the ambassador of blackness as well. I don't want to be out and people perceive me as any of those stereotypes because a lot of people that I meet are often shocked when they're like, oh, because I'm the first black person they've ever met. And they're like, this is not at all what I expected. And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell were you expecting? But I don't get angry with ignorance because a lot of times when I'm in for other countries, it's because they haven't had any interaction with black people. They really don't know what to expect. They just go off of what they saw on TV or what they've heard from somebody else, right? But the racism in America is a lot different. The racism in America is very hostile. And not only is it hostile, but it comes from a different place. Um, but I was talking to a friend of mine before, on, um, and they're not a person of color, and they were asking me, well, why does everything have to be about slavery? Why do you always talk about slavery? Can't we move past that? And I had to explain to them that all of the issues that you see in the black community stem from slavery. It started here, and it trickled down through the generations Generations later, we're still feeling the effects of slavery because slavery itself has never been addressed. You talk about freeing the slaves, right? Like, and that right there is flawed ideology anyway because you can't free a people who were already free. We may have been in bondage, but we've always been free, right? So that's the first thing that I see that's wrong with this connection because if you feel that you freed the slaves, you feel like you gave us something. And if you gave us something, we should be grateful. You see where I'm going with that? So there is there is just so much to unpack when you talk about the black experience and when you talk about like this living a mediocre life because that's not something that many black people are afforded because even black people who you perceive not as being poor or not doing so well, they've had to claw and fight and, you know, make ends meet the best they, best way they know how. I know um, a few people that live in the hood and their parents had like three jobs just to make ends meet. You can't be lazy having three jobs. You just don't have the income. Those are not the same thing, but when you see, oh, they live in the ghetto, so they must be lazy. 
That is not the case at all. They just don't have the income, but it's not for lack of trying. It's not for desire. I read Michelle Obama's Becoming book, and she mentioned in that book about how her grandfather, how I think it was called Dandy, how his spirit was broken so much because when he was trying to come up and work, then they started unions. Who owned all the unions? Of course, it was the white people. So they weren't letting black people join the unions. So black people were not able to become union workers. So then you go out and try and get a job. And the first thing they ask you is, are you a union worker? No, then you can't work here. So he's stuck. If he can't join the union that was created by the white people that are not letting black people in, and you can't get a job without being a part of the union, what are you supposed to do? So you get another job, but the other job you get doesn't pay that much. You see what I'm saying? So there's this cycle that has been perpetuated over the generations when it comes to people of color. So you've got to understand just because a person's income level may not be where yours is. And we, had, we did another video about the uh, model minority and we talked about Asian hate and these sort of things. And, but you can't compare the two because African Americans or people of color started from nothing. They started from the absolute bottom and they've had to try to claw and work their way up. But you're working your way up in a system that has been designed for a 10K marathon. And you've said to these black people, in addition to this 10K marathon, you also have to complete the triathlon. We're never gonna be on an even playing field if we're not all running the same race. You see? At any rate. So um, if you get a chance, do watch it and um and if you would post your comments about what you think about about this video as well as if you get to watch the um i support black mediocrity from andre williams that video because we want to have this the thing about conversations is that because i keep we keep saying we want to have a conversation i was thinking about a conversation that i really would like to have but i'm apprehensive to have and i'll need to share it i'm just saying I'm thinking about this conversation that I really would like to have because I don't understand some things. So I'm really trying to understand. Um, but with conversations, sometimes something is going to be said in a way <clears throat> that even as, if it's not taken out of context, a person's going to be offended. And I try to be big and bad. It's like, well, if it offends you, then maybe you need to think about why it offends you. But that's that's not nice either so i th i think about in a conversation sometimes things are going to be said that you don't like but let's get to the root of what's actually being said otherwise why have a conversation because the whole point is for us to have a dialogue so that we can talk about things and we can get an understanding and then we can move forward from there um even if it's to a point where we can agree to disagree like star wars versus star trek Star Trek, of course. And then Star Wars. Star Wars is good. It's Star Trek. Way up there. I digress. Um, but these conversations need to be had. And, and, and we've been wanting these conversations for years. Just so that... You know, like other groups. Not just tolerate us. But accept us for who we are. We're people. We just happen to have melan more melanin in our skin. That doesn't make us less. And yes, there are cultural differences, but that's okay too. And why can't that be okay? I was going to bring up something else, but that's, totally, that's another topic altogether. <clears throat> but anyway, at any rate, conversation. See, I'm correcting myself just so that I can appear. It's so deep. <clears throat> So, um, like, comment, subscribe, definitely comment because we, we do these videos so that there is a conversation so that we can, if there's a problem, maybe we can get to the root of it together. Maybe it can inspire us to be more politically active and talk to these lawmakers who are doing things to keep certain people from being able to do the things they need to do to make this country better for everybody 
and not just for themselves. And that's all I'm gonna say. I, I think I, I went off topic. I didn't mean to. I just get, everything just seems so connected to me. Uh, and I, I don't like spiders, but it's, you know, it's the web. It's like all these things, these strings are all out here. And then there's the center and there's the one thing that binds everything together, but everything gets way out here and we're trying to, and then of course the looping in and tying it all together, everything is connected. So I just get, I just get caught up. So I just want to be a person. I don't want to have to try to prove myself everywhere I go in everything I do. I just want to like what I like, sing what I sing, like who I like, watch what I want to watch or whatever. I just want to be a person. I don't want to have to be a superior person and go through all of that just to still be considered three fourths of a person. So, thanks. Okay, so I could talk about that for hours and hours and hours, but it, you know, we, we're not saying anything different than what's been said. It's just kind of like you get on autopilot and you keep repeating yourself. At some point, hopefully, you know, people will start to listen because I think black people are demanding a lot more. And I think that's great. You know, it's been in waves since the, since slavery um, ended until now the practice of slavery ended until now and you see these generational problems and you see the obstacles that black people have had to overcome over the years one of the things that i admire the most about my peoples is we are ridiculously resilient you can't be lazy that way we're not lazy people we are resilient and we are tough that we've survived all of the things that you've thrown at us and we're still here and we're still making it happen in our own way because all of the trends that you see, all of the, you know, things that are considered cool stem from black culture. And we have been able to advance ourselves in our own way. You won't give us a job, we create our own jobs. But then what happens? You destroy that. Okay, you won't allow us to participate in your town, so we create our own town. You destroy that. Okay, I'm trying to work and get a house for my family, but now you have unfair housing practices okay i finally was able to get a house and secure a loan but my interest rate is a lot higher because i'm black and i don't have the same income level that white people do there's no even playing field regardless of what you try to do so you pu you push us into being mediocre but then we overcome those obstacles time and time again and we make it our own and we make it our way you won't allow us to participate in your award shows okay we create our own we can't have you know our music and do these things okay we create our own you see we've overcome so much and we're still here and we're still making a way um one of the last things i want to talk about is um derek chauvin being sentenced to 22 and a half years Hopefully he will serve the full 22 and a half years. Um, that's a start. I did not celebrate that as a victory because you still have justice um, that needs to be, we, we still need justice for Ahmaud Avery. We still need justice for Breonna Taylor. We still need justice for Trayvon Martin. Yes, I included him because that was a miscarriage of justice if I've ever seen one. We still need justice for countless more people that have been abused and victimized by the systems designed and set up to keep Black people in their place. Um... So yeah, um, there, there are so many other things that we could unpack here that would fill a whole other video. Um, but I'll stop there. And to respond to my dear sister when she was talking about uh, Star Wars versus Star Trek, I want to say it will depend on which Star Trek you're talking about because nothing tops the next generation. Do you like Kirk or do you like Picard? Jean-Luc Picard 
is the best Starfleet captain of all time. I said it. That being said, I'm Angel with Unbasic Black. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I want to say a very, very special thank you to Alexa Jewelry for this beautiful piece that she's allowed me to wear for my recording today. Um, go on, check out her wares because she makes some dynamic and beautiful jewelry. So thank you, Alexa Jewelry, for sponsoring me in this video. And uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment, please. We want to know what you think. These are conversations. Conversations. We're not people that's like turning off comments because we don't want to hear what you have to say. We want to know. If you don't agree with anything that we've talked about, let us know. Put it down in the comments and we'll talk about it. And you know, we have opinions about everything. So please comment down below. Um, that being said, thanks for watching. Have a blessed rest of your week. And we will have many more conversations to come. Thanks for watching.